I am Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are going on in our community, and today will be no different. You know, as you look around our great community, you see lots of things happening in terms of economic development. And one of the reasons that Huntsville has become the star of Alabama is because of all the great progress that has been made in our community over the last few years. It is an exciting time to be here indeed. And one of the things that I recognize on a daily basis is that there are a lot of great people here who are thinking a lot about the future of our city. They're entrepreneurs, they're business owners, and they're people who just like to dream. I've got a couple of people here today who started an initiative that I think you're gonna to wanna to know a whole lot about. And so I've invited them to be a part of our discussion today. Tim Alston is one of the co-founders of the Alabama Christian Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our broadcast today. Thank you very much, Kenny. We're happy to be here. It's good to have you here. Of course, you've been here before wearing another hat. Yes, I have. And but this is this is a special hat. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, anytime you want to come on, you wear any kind of hat you want, you just come on and be a part of our discussion. All right. Thank you. Duly noted. <laughs> All right. Robin Arnold is also a co-founder of the Alabama Christian Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's good to have you both here, and I think it'd be great for us to start right at the very beginning. Where did this organization come? from and why does it exist? Your prefacing remarks set the stage. Huntsville is booming part. In fact, the diversity we experience in Huntsville, the industries that are coming, that are going, that are growing, this is the largest economic development period in the state's history, not just Huntsville, Madison County, state's history. And, but of all of these businesses that are starting, some in garages, some in spare bedrooms, some in research parks, some in other places, there is one thread of commonality. To succeed, they need to have honesty, integrity, fairness, customer service. Those values are universal values. They cut across all multicultural lines. When we began to go out as business people and to canvas people about business interests, we put out a business directory last year. People began to say to us, we have values. We believe in honesty, fairness, uh, customer service. However, we don't find a forum where we can talk about our values as easily as we talk about business. And then from our faith-based backgrounds, we would be in our faith-based worship places and see people there who were faith-based, but they felt ill at ease talking about business best practices. Mm. We said, let's put those two worlds together. Robin, who was a tireless researcher, began doing research. She said, she said guys, <laughs> <laughs> she said, we know what a chamber of commerce is. It is the association of businesses, large and small, individuals and corporate. We know what Christians are. We know what Alabama is. But there's never been a coming together of those three concepts, Alabama, chamber of commerce, and Christians. She said, guys, there's not another one here in the state. Here we are in the Bible Belt, but here we also are in the economic star of Alabama. Let's bring those worlds together as never before, and thereby let's form the Alabama Christian Chamber of Commerce. All right, well, that sounds like a great start. You've been in existence now for how long? Start at the top of this year, 2015. All right, and so coming into the new year, there's a lot of excitement about this particular initiative. What are your goals? Well, our goals are, number one, to marry the community. There are a lot of entrepreneurs, there are a lot of business owners, there are a lot of people who want to start their own businesses. We live in a time now where dreaming is at its peak. You know, our economic situations have just made people think outside of the normal box. You don't work a job for 50 years anymore because things change so rapidly. You don't even work one for five exactly. years these days. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we hope to bring all those dreamers together under one roof so that they can interact with each other and help each other out. There's a lot of businesses, a lot of female-owned businesses in this city. Um, there's a lot of incubators that have startup businesses in this city. And we just want everyone to know they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can share the ride with other people. All right, so now here's the question. You said reinvent the wheel. Somebody's going to ask you this question, as I know they have. We have a Madison County Chamber of Commerce. We have a North Alabama African American Chamber of Commerce. Yes. 
I work closely with the Hispanic uh, Business Alliance of North Alabama, which mm -hmm. is an emerging organization, just really got their legs first part of this year as well. What is your niche as it relates to the economic existence of this organization? Our experience has been, and Robin has done the research on this, that a lot of times with the chambers that you mentioned, they mainly deal with small to medium to large businesses. We're not opposed to that. But in, for us, our niche many times is that solo business person, that micro business, who may not feel as though they can afford financially or time-wise to be a part of a larger chamber of commerce like you mentioned, plus the fact that they are still kind of wrestling with how to be faith-based and how to be business at the same time because somehow we've been taught that those are two separate and distinct worlds. So what we do in the Alabama Christian Chamber of Commerce, we provide Christian business training to help them to learn how to be able to marry those worlds together. The other thing that Robin mentioned is the fact that we also deal with a lot of small businesses, individual businesses, people who are homeschoolers, people, let's say, who maybe uh, have a hobby or moonlight as a musician or a Christian comedian, a clean comic. A caterer. Yeah, a caterer, photographer, videographer. Mm -hmm. They may not know that there are fellow videographers, fellow caterers, fellow homeschoolers out here. Our chamber provides the hub, the network, where they can come together and work. We don't call them forming support groups. We call it forming affirmation groups. And our Christian business training later this month will help them learn how to do that and even better. And that's why it's free to them because it helps to fit into the world where they are to bring them from where they are to where they want to be as full-fledged, faith-based business people. So here's your elevator speech opportunity. Uh, someone once famously said, uh, membership has its privileges. <laughs> um, sell me on being a member. <laughs> I'm not so I, I, I give her. I give her. I give her all the tough questions. <laughs> oh, he's giving me I'm all not the sold. tough questions. <laughs> Selling you on being a member. We are an interdenominational organization. It's an organization where you can come in with a startup business and touch bases, elbows, push up your sleeves, and work with professionals who can help you nurture and grow your startup business. And that is what we offer that is not offered as much in the other chambers. That is our niche, that is our specialty. Right. So you can come into a meeting and in, our me in the meeting, you're not going to just be meeting with engineers. You will be meeting with a, a videographer, you'll be meeting with a photographer, you'll be meeting with someone who does graphics, someone who does IT, and everyone will be in the same room to help you form a complete business. Well, so much you, know, you know very well as a director of multicultural activities, that everything, your whole business, your work is based upon relationships, relationship building. You just read my script there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and so what we are seeking to do is build relationships on another level. So many individual entrepreneurs, that person in that back room or in that garage tinkering with their item, they don't know there's another community out here of other people just like them. By that coming together, by that networking, they grow. I've often heard one of famous American philosopher by the name of Kenny Anderson say, it is the teamwork <laughs> that makes the dream work. You were listening. <laughs> I was listening and remembered. <laughs> and so what we're seeking to do with our free Christian business training is bring people together. For example, we have a specialist come in to talk about product development. Mm -hmm. You know, in a market like this, which is very heavily aerospace and missile defense, very heavily technology, how to bring that thing you've been tinkering with in your garage, in your spare bedroom, how to bring it from ideation to creation to production to implementation. Also, all of us are wrestling with the issue of time management. In one of our sessions, one of our persons is going to debunk the issue of time management, saying there's no such issue as time management. The other thing is, how do you think strategically about what you're doing? How do you move from where you are to where you need to be? Another key thing about relationship building is listening. The reality is we learn nothing by talking. We learn everything by listening. One of the key things that I like to talk about is how to become a CEO to become a CEO. And for that, CEO we know means uh, uh, a, uh, a chief executive officer. But because we're a Christian business organization, we talk about how to develop a Christ-empowered orientation, how to go from those values of faith values of honesty, values of fair play, customer service, how you build that basis to become a CEO. 
I don't know of, and I've been a part of all those chambers you're talking about, I don't know of any of those chambers that do that kind of intentional training. Why? Because of the fact that they cannot bring it from a faith basis. We unapolog unapologetically can. Because our main model is a person who talked more about money than heaven, that did more of his miracles in the marketplace than in the church. Do you focus on um, uh, the notion of, um, you know, we're talking about relationship building mm -hmm. and networks. Do you focus on having uh, networking opportunities among members? Um, you know, the, the larger chamber, of course, has things like breakfast and biz, chamber after hours. Um, wh what opportunities would there exist for mm -hmm. those individuals to be networked? Is there a monthly meeting? Um, you know, we do, do have monthly things, meetings. How do those things operate? We have monthly meetings. We have brown bag lunches. We have training sessions um, that are general training sessions, and then we break them down into specific training sessions so that everyone can cross-train and learn the different things. One of the things that's really popular in Huntsville that we've run across is that due to the amount of education that is in Huntsville and the amount of instructors and educators and professionals, there are a lot of people who write books. We have a lot of authors in our community. We have a venue for those authors to come together. We can help them get their book published. Self-publishing is a huge thing these days. And it can be very expensive if you don't know what you're doing and because everyone has jumped on the bandwagon to take as much money from you as possible. So at minimal cost, we have classes and workshops where people can come in and learn how to self-publish, how to edit, how to look at their book, how to market their book on Facebook, how much you really have to spend in your marketing dollars. Take your profession that you've done all of your life and turn it into a book that is marketable to sell and teach other people. So we bring everyone together so that they can interact and we have various venues that they can do that in. Right. And that is precisely why we're having this first event, the, uh, the Christian Business Training on the 22nd of uh, June at the Huntsville Marriott, so that all these different people who are out here can come together and begin to see each other. I dare say, it is not impossible to have seen a person that you know, let's say, in the checkout line at Publix or Walmart, or even in your own uh, church. Know them, speak to them don't realize the fact that they too are an entrepreneur or they have a service or a product that could help you. There is no forum for the little people until now. That's awesome to know that. And um, with the time that we have remaining, which is a very little bit of time, I wanna give you a chance to tell people how they can find you. If you've got a website, Facebook page, phone number, points of contact that people coming away from this conversation will be able to reach out to you and get more information about your organization. Okay, our training on the 22nd is free to the public. So all they have to do is go to our website at www.alaccc.com and they can get information on joining the chamber as well as registering for the free class on the 22nd. And because we recognize the market we're dealing with, we're having two free sessions that day, one from 10 to 12, and for the person who's working, who doesn't get off work, who is contemplating becoming an entrepreneur, there's an afternoon session from 5.30 to 7.30. Simply go to our website, www.alaccc.com, and get more information. Or if they need to phone, they can call us at 256-469-8572. All right. Tim Alston and Robin Arnold, thank you for being here with us today. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be back. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. You should have said, I'll be back. <laughs> No, no, we. You, you deal I just want to say, me too. But I <laughs> we're, doing, a, we're collective. I was just trying to channel my Arnold Schwarzenegger. I see. Okay. You know, well, that, that'll be for the next interview. <laughs> next person. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for being thank here you. today. Thank, thank you. you. We thank you for being a part of our discussion as well. We hope that you'll join us for our next edition of Impact, coming to you soon. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day, and we'll talk to you in a little while. <laughs>